start our show with border standoff in China's Doklam area. The Indian Army has ordered the evacuation of a village close to the border. Right now, it is not immediately clear whether the evacuation is in any way to accommodate soldiers or to protect citizens in a case of a skirmish. It has been almost two months since Indian soldiers crossed the border and interrupted a road construction. China has urged India to withdraw all troops, but there are still some remaining there. Before our discussion on the ongoing situation, take a look at this. It is the longest standoff since war erupted between China and India in 1962. Seven weeks have passed, but there is still no end in sight. Chinese Foreign Ministry revealed that 53 Indian personnel and one Indian bulldozer were still inside Chinese territory on Monday. The ministry stressed that no matter how many people remained inside China, any illegal occupation of Chinese territory is a serious violation of Chinese sovereignty. And the Indian side must withdraw all of its personnel back to India immediately. Chinese media, Global Times, also warned that if the Narendra Modi government continues ignoring the warnings coming from a situation spiraling out of control, countermeasures from China will be unavoidable. Some say India wants to turn it into a stalemate with no war, no peace. Early last week, Indian Foreign Minister Sushma Swaraj. Said the border standoff with China cannot be resolved through a war, but can only be settled through bilateral talks. Military readiness is always there, but I want to tell you one thing: war is not a solution to any issue. You have to initiate a dialogue even after war. War is not a solution on its own. India is divided on this. Scores of people in northern India joined a protest rally against Chinese products. On the other hand, an Indian boxer called for peace and friendship after winning a double title fight against his Chinese opponent. India-China friendship, because the tension on the border is not good. So I just、uh, give this title to the to the people to the to the peace. I think because you know it's all about peace. It's all about uh, uh, India-China friendship. China has a strong will to solve the problem peacefully, but the prerequisite. Is that the Indian trespassers must withdraw unconditionally and immediately. As tensions escalate, it is more urgent to build mutual trust between the two neighbors. For more on the China-India border standoff, we have、uh, three panelists with us in Beijing: Mr. Ye Hailin, who is the director of the Center for South Asia Studies with the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. Welcome. In New Delhi, India, we have. Mr. Dipanka Banjari, who is a retired major general of the Indian Army and also director and head of the Institute of Peace and Conflict Studies, welcome as well. Joining us in Bangkok from Thailand as a third-party observer, we are joined by Mr. Shang Bupakong, a former advisor to the Thai government. Welcome, sir. I want to start with the two parties that are involved in this standoff: China and. India. Let's go to our India panelist first, Mr. Banerjee. Help us to understand why the Indian troops are not going back to where they belong. Well, the area where this current situation has occurred is in a disputed area. It is in the tri junction of India, China, and Bhutan. Possibly, most of the activities have happened in Bhutanese territory. India and Bhutan has got very close fraternal relationship. The Treaty of 2007,、mm. just ten years ago, reinvigorates our earlier friendship arrangements. Under which conditions, if required. India will come to the assistance and support of Bhutan, and it is under these conditions that India has been involved in this current state of skirmish at the Doglam Plateau region. Okay, we have had a stable border situation, though a disputed one, for a long time. 
and this is not an area where either side would like to create a condition by which there could be skirmishes or dis disputes or such developments between India and China. All right, but there is the situation. So what happened? Why now, Mr. Ye? In my understanding, that we heard a lot that the Indian government announced that the issue is because of the they have the security concern over the Bhutan's territory and the Bhutan's uh, sovereignty. But like we review the essential uh, fact. Before this uh, intr intrusion happened, Bhutan government that never complained to the Chinese government to about such kind of issue. So this complaint it didn't come from the Bhutan government. And after this, after two weeks, Bhutan Foreign Affairs Ministry released a statement to support so-called support the Indian government, but didn't clarify that uh, the intrusion is under imitation of the Bud of the Bhutan government. So. Why Bhutan is involved? In it? We didn't hear any official why announcement. India is involved yeah, no, in why Bhutan is involved? Involved. We didn't hear this. Uh, something is related to Bhutan. It's only related to the Indian. But we should also no, uh, notice that one essential fact: the Indian army came from the Chinese border with India, not with Bhutan. If Indian army did came from on the purpose of the Bhutan's protection, so called, they, can, they should come from the Bhutan sovereignty. It didn't come. All so right. what's, what's really the, uh, the, the motive behind this intrusion is very clear. It's not be because of a Bhutan, it's because of India. We have to have Mr. Banerjee to respond to that. Two things, Mr. Banerjee. One is that well, we don't know mm -hmm. anything about yes, Bhutan true. asking for help from India and why Indian troops are there on the excuse, as Mr. Ye put it, uh, by Bhutan. Secondly, is that Indian troops entered the area from the border and India, rather enter into that border rather than with any third party involved. So two issues, Mr. Banerjee. Firstly, this is a trijunction where the India, Bhutan and China border meets at this point. So it is within Bhutan or India or China is a disputable situation. It is at the request of the Bhutanese that India has come to their assistance and now in possibly an area where it is under the Bhutanese mm. jurisdiction, uh, Indian armed, armed forces have come to the help of Bhutan at their request. Because what was happening is that the PLA had started constructing a road, a road leading into this area, which remains a disputed area. And under the 2013 border agreement between India and China, between senior military generals of both sides, signed in Beijing, a procedure was worked out by which situations such as this will be resolved through dialogue and discussion at the forward areas between relative military commanders I see. through flag meetings at the border or other levels of discussion. Okay. And we can resort to that straight away. All right. Mr. Banerjee, a follow up. When you say that Indian troops are coming to the region now disputed at the request of the Bhutanese government, do you have any evidence? that would help us to understand about your statement? Well, of course. Uh, firstly, the 2007 uh, Treaty of Friendship That's between a treaty. Bhutan I see. and India uh, creates situations that enables us to do that. Secondly, I'm not in the government right now, but I'm told that there have been an official request from Bhutan to India to come to its assistance yeah. Uh, Mr. Banerjee, uh, Mr. Banerjee let me just clarify which you, the word you use. This, is an this, official or unofficial? Uh, could you make sure that we hear the word clearly? Is it an official request or is it an unofficial request? Which word you just used? No, I am not a government official now. Okay. So I cannot categorically say as to what is the form of request. But it is a firm request from Bhutan. And as I once again said, 
that this is a trijunction area where both India and Bhutan are involved in this uh, situation with the Chinese PLA. All right. Let's go to Mr. Ye. Several important issues. Whether there's a request or not, probably you don't know. We know. All right. Because the Bhutan government never raised such kind of issue to the Chinese government. It's very natural. If Bhutan government thinks it's a very sensitive and say it's a high level security issue, the Bhutan government will directly contact with the Chinese government and raise such kind of issue. But we never heard it. All right. And the Bhutan government already verified they didn't raise any kind of issue to the Chinese government before that. Okay, that's one thing. The other thing is about the, the tri junction. The tri junction that Mr. Banerjee mentioned. Mm -hmm. That is a controversial, according to him, place and area among China, Bhutan, and India. Is that true? Firstly, this uh, trijunction area is confirmed by the treaty signed in the 1890s. It's not an uh, area, it's a point. So what it's do you mean, not an area? Actually, a it's point. a peak, it's a mountain peak. Okay. So it's not a, 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 as the location that the Indian Foreign Affairs Ministry just mentioned in the parliament. It's a different uh, location. We can verify the treaty. Even the name mentioned by the Indian Foreign, uh, Foreign uh, Minister on these areas is not appeared on the treaty. So it's never in the treaty. So we can say that it's different areas so, and different locations. So what are you saying, Mr. Ye? This means the, the transaction areas, the, the, the point is not areas, it's already confirmed by the treaty. It's All not right. uh, unconfirmed on our dispute. And the, another issue the is reason that uh, we uh, should uh, notice... Let's let, let, okay. let just help the in mm -hmm. international audience because you've been talking yeah. about this every day, but sure. many of our international audience might not know this. So what is the difference between a point, geographically speaking, and the area, geographically mm -hmm. speaking? We so I guess that's a difference of kilometers. Of course, if we talk space. about a point, that means that we can show on the map there is the trijunction point of the three countries. But if we're talking about areas, what's the defined defi definition for areas? Twenty kilometers square, one hundred kilometers square. But, but you can name yeah, any yeah, You've been arguing against yeah. your Indian counterpart. If what he said is not true, what do the Chinese believe was happening? We have the treaty. Go back and uh, verify the treaty. The treaty indicates that the Indian army crossed the border into the Chinese territory. Okay. Mr. Banerjee, to be fair, you really need to respond to what Mr. Ye just said. Yes. You know, the treaties of 1890 18, uh, and later at that period is a long time ago. It was signed between countries which were not there. India was under British occupation, Tibet and China was under different type of regimes, and so was Bhutan. It is more important to lead to the current situation where we have clear agreements between the current regimes of China, India and Bhutan to maintain peace and tranquility in these areas. So wherever such mm. disputes occur or such disputations take place regarding the alignment of the uh, 1890 treaty or this particular point or that particular point. The issue that we have agreed upon, all three all right. countries, is to maintain peace and tranquility, not to change the situation in these areas and resolve the issues through dialogue and discussion between under systems laid down. Deng Xiaoping himself in 1988 said that if this situation cannot be resolved by this generation, we should keep and pin this problem for the future. Meantime, build good relations okay. between both India and China and develop our all-round cooperation and friendship. All right. So that is the need of the hour, not uh, building forces, confronting each other, of course, no shot has been fired in anger. Uh, it's only some jostling taking place in a disputed area. Let us accept that this is a disputed area. And so therefore, All right. the best way to resolve this problem is through a dialogue and discussion at appropriate levels. All right. Let's hear from Mr. Ye as well. First of all, 
is what Mr. Banerjee talked about, the controversy area mentioned by Mr. Deng Xiaoping, the area that we are talking about today between China and India at all. Secondly, who was there trying to change the status quo? What about the escalation of tensions? Which side took the action first? If we knew what we have arguments about that, now what each side need to do? Okay, I would like to raise uh, two points. Firstly, the, our general from India uh, uh, side just uh, the treaty signed a very long time ago, yes. But according to this treaty signed a long time ago, a couple of years ago, China and India opened a border on the 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 the, the, the sea I, I means we we have an open border and a trade point in the, this area. So if the the treaty is not available, why there is a border? So that's very clarified that the Indian government admit this treaty is still effective. So why in this? Doctrine areas, this treaty is not available. So that's my question. Uh, secondly, uh, yes, we agree all the dispute issues should be solved by the peaceful negotiation, but this area is not a dispute area. It's mm. Chinese territory. So in this condition, it's really difficult for China to accept it. So through the peaceful negotiation to solve these areas, because our territory is now illegally occupied by the Indian army. So it's really difficult to, to say. Okay. So for the Indian government, such kind of the occupation is the method of the peaceful negotiation. Mr. Banerjee, the Chinese side, according to Mr. Ye, believe India was trying to provoke something which China still haven't figured out what exactly the nature of it. Well, firstly, of course, let me say that the border trade that takes place in this area is across the Nathula Pass. This pass is very well defined. It is further to the west of where this incident has taken place. Some distance away, uh, Indian pilgrims have also, since the last few years, gone across this pass towards the holy place of Kailas Mansarovar in Tibet. Good gesture on the part of China to allow this route to be used by Indian pilgrimage. Pil pilgrims. The situation through which this issue incident has occurred is the Chinese attempt to construct and improve a road in this uh, area of Doklam. Now if that were to stop for the time being, dialogue and discussion take place, we come to a clearer understanding as to what can or cannot be done, resume the trade across okay. the Natula Pass, which has been uh, good for both Tibet and India. And again, things will come back to normal. This is not a situation where either side should blame the other. Okay. Because what actually happened in the ground, uh, nobody can predict with any degree of certainty. All right. One thing we have to make sure, Tibet is part <coughs> of China and People's Republic of China is recognized by yes, the United Nations. India has agreed to that. And Tibet is, is part no of China that is there recognized is no by almost all the countries there is no issue in the world. That. So there's nothing so-called so between China, between <laughs> India and uh, Tibet. But uh, having clarified that, which is a principal issue, I just mentioned I would like Mr. Ye Tibet region of China to say and a that's few agreed. words. Yes. Okay. Mm, we yeah. have no difficulty on that. Yeah, OK. Mm. All right. So may I ask uh, one simple question there? If uh, Indian government, it seems that the Indian government uh, think that according to this treaty, some part of the border is confirmed, but some part of the border is not confirmed. So if such kind of things are applicable on such kind of the treaty, how China can read this, this treaty? Can China also raise the <laughs> argument that we think some part is confirmed and some other part is not confirmed? Mm. So w what's, the, what's, what's the meaning for such kind of a treaty? So where to go from here, yeah. Mr. Ye? I have to ask you. So uh, in my understanding, it's quite simple that before the Indian completely immediately withdraw all the troops from Chinese territory, there is no de negotiation. Right. India always announced that they want to have the negotiation, but they send troops across the border. It's really difficult to call this a negotiation. All right. Um, well, Mr. Banerjee tried to put the voice together. Let's go to also Mr. Bukpakon, who has been attentively listened to uh, the two gentlemen who is in a very fierce debate 
about what they believe as very principal issues. Uh, Mr. Bo Popcorn, conflict reservation, conflict re resolve, we know it's a difficult issue. Does it come in sequence about who's right, who's wrong, and then figure out the solutions? Can people figure out the solutions without knowing who's right and who's wrong? I think that's a very profound question for many issues that we need to think about. Mr. Bupakong. Well, I have uh, studied this issue actually for some time. Mm. I remember incident back in 1962 when uh, the, there was a, a, a clash between those countries and have followed it relatively well. At some point, both China and India must have felt aggrieved at one time or another. There was a chance for some type of demarcation agreement in 1948. 1950 by, you know, during the time between Prime Minister Nehru and uh, Prime Minister Sho Enlai, <coughs> but somehow it never materialized. Uh, another problem is that there are 3,500 uh, kilometers of, of uh, really an area which are not exactly defined, uh, both trying to use the British, the, the Otto <coughs> Johnson plus McCartney and um, McDonald's, and those are, are still not resolved. I believe that both countries have to look at this as a core interest. Both Delhi and Beijing are far from it, far from the disputed area. And plus, both countries have to realize that the bilateral trade are okay. tremendous, like $65 billion last year. And I believe that I, I saw some hope, but I'd like to, like to uh, wait for another chance to, to make this point. But I believe that, that for now, both leaders have not made inflammatory speech toward the area, and that's a welcome thing. There could not be a, a type of disagreement like this right. prior to the BRIC meeting and the party congress. So let's bear in mind, and I, I'd like to, uh, to say something in conclusion a little bit later. All right. Uh, we are really running out of time uh, because of the fierce debate between the other two gentlemen. Mr. Bupa Kong, you better make your final point right now before we go. Very briefly, sir, I can. if you can. Uh, uh, basically, I know that both China and and Indian uh, governments have retreat, and I think that's a good thing. It may not be reported very much, but this is what we know. Mm. So I believe there are hope because those countries have cultural link to Southeast Asian. Uh, we Thais have Chinese uh, descendant. We also have right. Indian heritage, and we both have almost three trillion dollar trade between all three of us. So it's good that we maintain this status quo, and I hope the negotiation continues well. Okay. Mr. Banerjee, 15 seconds for you before we go to the Chinese colleague for his 15 seconds. 15 seconds. Yes. Yes. Uh, the issue is not who is right and who is wrong. Of course, as an Indian, I will say India is right, and my Chinese friend will also say, China is right. Now, together, China and India have 6,000 years of experience right. in handling diplomacy at the international level. Surely, it's in our capability to work out a diplomatic solution short of conflict and bring this whole situation to a peaceful end without any rancor right. and continue with our cooperation mutually for the benefit of Asia and the world. Big statement being yeah. made by Mr. Banerjee. Mm. Uh, 15 seconds yeah. for right. you, Mr. Ye. Before India sent their army across the border, India should remember that we have 6,000 years civilization exchange history. But now it's too late to remind us to remember these 6,000 years. We only remember we have 50 foreign soldiers now on our territory. I see. Well, thank you so much, gentlemen, for being with us. Ye Hailin, Deepanka Banerjee, Jean Bupakun. Thank you for being with us. Thank you.